Hey, bitch. Life is a series of raw and messy broken parts, and it's up to us to embrace it for all the wild fuckery it is. So if you're feeling a little broken, well, you're in the right place. Welcome to Broken Bitches Guide. When I wanna shine, I got broken bitches guide. Hey. And I got it so divine, I got broken bitches guide. <laughs> yeah. Manifested by design, I got broken bitches guide. Let me hear you from the back. Lifting up my vibes with broken bitches guide. <laughs> Welcome to Broken Bitches Guide. I'm your host, Mandy Brooke, and today we're going to have a really open conversation about spirituality and embracing our intuition. Learning the language of our soul takes some practice, especially in a world full of distractions and opinions. So we're going to discuss like how to follow your intuition and how to listen to our inner guidance. Because even Albert Einstein has said, The intuitive mind is a sacred gift, and the rational mind is a faithful servant. So I wanted to invite a really cool guest today. Her name is Carrie Underwood, not to be mistaken for the country singer. You may know her as Kino Taro on YouTube. Kino is a very talented intuitive reader based out of Tokyo, and she shares pick a card tarot readings to her 335,000 subscribers on a wide range of topics. Her goal is to bring confirmation and encouragement to her collective while helping others strengthen their relationship with their soul. And she is a very talented, self-produced musician as well. I've been personally watching Carrie, or Kino Taro, for about three years now, and her readings have always resonated and gave me so much courage. So I thought, what better guest to have on to chat about tapping into our intuition, and also demystifying certain aspects about spirituality that may feel intimidating. But just a note before we dive in. Carrie and I get really, really open about spirituality in our lives and how that shows up for us personally, but I want to encourage you to explore whatever feels right to you. We all have faiths and beliefs that make sense to us, and the purpose of this conversation is to open our minds to the possibilities and maybe come away with a new perspective. So let's get into it. Welcome to the podcast, Kino. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy that you're here. I'm such a big fan. Thank and you. You you have definitely said in the past that you don't prefer to be called a psychic, which yes. I really love. So can mm-hmm. you tell me why? It's just never really a term that I've resonated with because I feel like it creates this sort of distinction where it's like a gift that some people have and some people don't. If I to say I am a psychic implies that there's people who are not. And I think it's just, it's just an ability that we all, that we all have, that we can all tap into. And I also believe that when I'm channeling these messages, I mean, it is, it is a gift that I'm tapping into, but I don't really see it as like, this is my gift that I am bestowing upon you. I think Mm -hmm. that I'm just, I'm just channeling what comes to me and the divine, I think the listener spirit guides often are the ones who are orchestrating the listener's encounter with that message, you mm-hmm. know, so there's there's something that's greater than us. I'm over here talking about whatever I'm talking about. And mm-hmm. if someone's spiritual team finds that there is something of value or, or this is a good opportunity to rel- relay a message to their human, I think that they're the ones who are just bringing that together. So I, I really do give them the credit for that. Totally. That's amazing. It's like an orchestra of of people that are (laughs) helping us on the other side. (laughs) Yes, exactly. It is happening all the time, all the time. Hey, future me editing here, realizing that we never really got into what spirit guides and a spiritual team is in this conversation. So essentially, imagine your spiritual team as your guides, your angels, your ancestors, and they're all helping and protecting you through this life. So have you ever had an incident where you missed a car accident because you were two minutes late for work? Or like my big sister, she fell out of a huge tall tree house and she walked away without a scratch when she was, I think, like four years old. It was insane. It was miraculous. It's times like these where people blame divine intervention. So the idea of a spiritual team is what if you have spirit guides assigned to you before you start this life cycle and their job is to help you through this life by giving you signs and protecting you and giving you messages along the way. I feel like 
that's really my goal with the podcast and with mm-hmm. all of this is like really to de- demystify the mystical. Yes. Yes. Because, because I feel like the spiritual community just overcomplicates intuition so much. Yes. And, and like you said, like it is literally available to every single person. You don't yes. have to be called like a psychic or like an intuitive reader in order to listen to your inner guidance. And I think mm-hmm. the spiritual community is like, oh, if you think negative thoughts, then you're going to manifest mm-hmm. these negative outcomes. And it's like, that's <laughs> yes. not the case at all. Yeah. It's so funny. Like I, I did know we're going to touch on the topic of intuition today and demystify was the literal word that I wanted to use. Like I want to demystify intuition because I think we can sometimes have this image of it as like this mystical, magical power that makes you know everything and you either get it right or you don't. You're either tapped into it or you're not. And it's this like external thing that you have to reach when it's really a very normal, natural and human thing that is always inside of us. And it's an inner compass. And I think we're actually tapped into it a lot more often than we realize. Mm -hmm. And I hope that people know that you, you can be tapped in and you can be on the right path, even in the midst of having fears, even in the midst of having negative thoughts or, or feeling moments of weakness, you know, we're, we're complex like that and we can do it all and we can do the most amazing things and we can find our right path, even when we're having those mental struggles. And I think, Mm saying that that somehow like negates your experience or negates your manifestations. It just, it creates unnecessary pressure. And resistance too. Yes. So like, how do you tap into your intuition? Like, how do you know when you're tapped in? Because I know a lot of people, they have a lot of anxious thoughts mm-hmm. and it's it's really hard to differentiate. Like, is this an anxiety fucking weird thought or is this mm-hmm. like an intuitive message? Like, how do you differentiate it? So there's a couple things. I do pay attention to the tone of voice, so to speak. So oh. I find that my intuition is just very chill, very chill, very loving. So if there's an inner voice that is like screaming at me or an inner voice that is unkind or that is is based in like fear and separation, I'm like, okay, that's not my intuition because my intu- she's like, she's chill as hell. <laughs> and the other thing I'm really big on is like uh, observing my body, observing where it is in my body. So, mm-hmm. and you can kind of test it out by saying something that you already know is true and that you already resonate with. For example, if I say, I love my dog or something, I feel that in my in my lower chakras, like in my lower stomach. I even sometimes feel it, like it sounds kind of strange, but I sometimes literally feel if a statement feels true to me, that it's like pulling me down to earth. Ooh, I feel like I'm going down into earth and like I'm grounded in that truth. Whereas when something is out of alignment or it's just my anxiety talking, it's very much like up in here, up in my head, my mm-hmm. shoulder, sometimes like down in my chest area. And it feels it's not really pulling me in any particular direction. It just feels very frazzled. And then I'm like, OK, that's that's mental chatter. Yeah, like your your intuition's definitely like a subtle whisper for mm-hmm. sure. Like I I found that too. And my anxiety is often met with like physical, physical things like a tight chest, mm-hmm. that nervous, you know, shaking thing. But mm-hmm. with your intuition being like that subtle loving voice, mm-hmm. I found that too. Yeah. It's so interesting that you feel pulled down to the earth, but that makes so much yeah. sense. I think it could be different for everyone. I think it's just like knowing yourself and knowing where in your body you're going to feel that and and what it feels like um i also feel like there's how do i describe this you know like there's me who's like living life and making these choices and then there's another me who's just observing who's your just, higher self yeah <laughs> who's just <laughs> observing my experience who's not judging who's just observing it and when i think about where they are they are also like down here Mm-hmm. Kind of, and kind of behind a little bit. Like, <laughs> really? you can see me right now, but they're almost like behind my lower back. And it's like this little green guy. Oh my gosh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, okay, that's the observer. And so if my observer is chill, then I feel safe. When I'm in meditation, especially deep meditation, I, I'm very aware of of my awareness. Uh-huh. And I just call it my awareness or or my higher self or whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. But it's like an orange glow for me. Oh. It's like 
it's orange. So that's so interesting mm-hmm. that you visualize it as like green. And green is so calming. It's so you, Kino. Oh, thank <laughs> you. You are so orange too. Warm, really? inspiring, uplifting. Yes. Oh my gosh. I wonder if the listeners feel like their higher selves are a different color too. <laughs> But I would, I would really encourage to like, think of your intuition as like in you or in your body or Mm -hmm. like coming from you and even close your eyes and try to visualize like, where is my higher self? What do they look like? How do they feel to even like speak out loud? If I speak this statement out loud that I know is true and that resonates, how, how is my higher self feeling? Have you ever heard of the emotion code? I don't know. So it's this thing my friend Candace showed me, actually. And it it's like you ask yourself a question. You kind of hook your fingers together. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do that. For listeners that don't know what I'm talking about, you kind of chain your fingers together. And then you ask yourself like a statement. Just say like, my name is Carrie. My name is Mandy, obviously. But like, my name is Carrie. And it's going yeah. to break the chain when I pull my fingers apart because it's it's not true but like my name is mandy Mm. and it keeps the chain of my fingers i I hope i'm explaining that correctly yeah 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 i've done that before i I believe it yeah i love it and this doesn't really have anything to do with like intuition this is more like your body's internal compass too Mm -hmm. sometimes when i sway forward Mm -hmm. when i say a certain statement i feel like okay that's that's the truth but then when i sway Mm. backwards okay that's not that's not true for me and the body is so wise. Yes. I mean, the fact that humans can literally produce milk and, and like know what a baby needs, you know, from our bodies, yeah. like that's, that's so crazy. Like our body is so intelligent and so smart. I think that the most important part of your intuition is to trust it. And I feel mm-hmm. like people don't trust at all at, because it's sometimes not what they want to hear. Yeah, it's, it's that for sure. I think that being tapped in to our intuition is our natural way of being. And it's something we can always come back to and something that's always available for us. But I also think that as we go through life, there are different factors that make us start to doubt our judgment, Mm -hmm. whether that's being done to us consciously or unconsciously or intentionally or unintentionally. I do think it is something that does happen. But I also think it's really important to remember that even in those moments, we're not really like strayed from it, so to speak. It's not gone. I often think of it as like something at the bottom of the water and there's maybe sand that got kicked up and the water is muddy, but it's still down there. Absolutely. It's not gone. And we just have to like calm down and wait for all of that mud to clear and then we can see it. That's so cool because that's why so many religious texts say like, be still. Because how are you supposed to like listen to yourself and listen to your internal compass when when you're full of distractions and when the dust is kicked up? I love that analogy. I'm such an analogy bitch. Oh my god, me too. I, I mean, you you'll know that. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely know that. I love your videos so much. But the thing that I love so much about your pick a card readings on YouTube, for one, they're so calming to me. You have I really such- appreciate that. Thank you. No wonder your higher self is green because it's like you're so calming. You have such a way to deliver your messages. And sometimes I don't even have a pile to pick. Sometimes I'll just like just put on your video while I'm cooking. Oh my gosh. Yeah, and I'll just listen. Just hang out with me. I just hang out with you, girl. And for those of you who aren't really familiar with pick a card readings, readers like Kino will display about three to four piles of cards for a viewer to pick based on what pile they're resonating with based on a certain topic. Kino, you cover all the topics from like love to general career advice to mm. like, what do your spirit guides need to say? And your your topics always hit. And Oh, thank you. I love it. And a I've lot always- of them are suggested by the by the community. So that's on them. They're oh, really? They, they, they're always coming up with the most creative ideas and especially on Patreon. Oh my gosh. The ideas are so, it's such a joy to be able, because anytime there's like a new interesting topic, I will discover new ways that the cards can be interpreted. And it's just, it's so much fun. It's so oh, much fun. Wow. You get Oh, like different combinations. And I'm like, oh my gosh, in the context of this topic, this card seems to be talking about X, Y, Z. And it's, it's, you know, I have a Gemini moon. So I love like exploring these different varieties and piecing it together. It's awesome. That's beautiful. I'm a Virgo girl. I I, mm. I 
think I'm a Leo, like, like I'm, my main sign is a Virgo, mm-hmm. and then my other sign mm-hmm. is a Leo, which makes so much sense, because, like... Yeah, I was going to say, that checks out. <laughs> Ray um, of sunshine vibes. <laughs> it's so fun. I've actually done this in a comedic style on my social media, because I love doing intuitive readings. I've been doing mm-hmm. them forever. I love doing mm-hmm. them. And I have like a very small collective of my followers that that follow this character called Mystic Meg, <laughs> which I didn't realize was a UK character at all. Like I, I might have to change her name now. Oh, it's a, that's an actual. Um, Apparently, in the nineties or eighties, like there was a, a psychic called Mystic Meg in the UK. I, I had no idea, <laughs> but she's a little rough around the edges. You know, she gets the message across with a little comedic style, but. Um, <laughs> I love doing it. But with your channel specifically, there's always like very good nuggets of wisdom in all of your videos, which I love. Oh, thank you. The second thing that I love about your stuff is like when I do feel strongly about a certain pile, it confirms what my intuition already knows. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. I feel like that's what tarot is really meant for. Like it'll resonate with your internal guidance already. You're not giving somebody information that they don't already know. Yeah, that's what we want the confirmation and the validation, you know, and it goes back to what we were just talking about with intuition being something that is, it's like an inherent part of you. It is your natural state. I even want to say like, it's your birthright to be, (laughs) to be tapped into that and to have that guidance system. And so if you're going to be a public reader, I feel like our job is to encourage and facilitate each person to get in touch or get back in touch with that internal guidance system. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll see comments on my videos or like someone on my channel or someone who's leaving Patreon and they're like, I really enjoyed watching your videos, but I feel like I don't need them anymore. And because I'm just going to focus on trusting my own intuition. And I'm like, like, I love that. If, yeah, if you can reach a place where you're like, I'm just going to go with my own gut and I feel confident in doing that. And I think like, I don't need to rely on these other people's readings. Like, I love that. That's, that's what I want. I, we should not create this kind of dynamic where people feel like they need to rely on our guidance or we are the ones telling them how it is and what they should do, because it's just not, it's not a healthy dynamic. It's not empowering. Like it's not good for you in the long term. And that's one thing that I've noticed about quote unquote psychics and stuff. My Mm. friend who went to a tarot reader, she basically said, you need to come to me every single week. And I'm like, do not go to her ever again. That's not who you need Sorry for that snort. (laughs) But like, that's what I mean. You don't need to. That's when... (laughs) There's there's my mom. Hi! I'm recording the podcast. Oh, so nice to see you. (laughs) That'll be part of the podcast. My mom just intuitively knew to come out. (laughs) I love that. I love that. I'm so happy I could see her. Oh, sorry. What were you going to say? Oh, like, yeah, like any anybody that is saying that you need them in order mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. follow your intuition, like, absolutely not. Like, it's already inherent, yeah. like you said, but go, yeah. go, go on with what you're going to say. Because when you said when you said, like, you need to come to me once a week, I was thinking of of certain situations where I, I've only seen this a handful of times, but it will be, you know, a psychic saying, like, you have some negative energy attached to you. And that's why you're not manifesting what you want or like that's why you can't find your soulmate or whatever it is and so you have to come to me and I'm gonna remove this negative energy from you and it kind of reminds me of when people are like you need to do this juice cleanse and it's like yeah or I have kidneys I have a liver I already have that equipment if you have negative energy if you have if you have some bs around you you are equipped to cleanse that and you have a beautiful spiritual team who can help you you know, and I'm not, I'm not discrediting like energy work for those purposes. But if anyone is saying like, you need to come to me and you need to pay me for this, I would just, I would evaluate that. I respect you so much more for saying that. That is such a good nugget. Your body is already equipped to detox. So why would, wouldn't you already have the equipment to detox negative energy yes. and, and to yes. know the truth? That's the kind of the danger of tarot and, and, and YouTube and pick a card readings in general is when someone is really trying to seek those answers and mm-hmm. it be, can become addicting, especially yeah. when they're in that desperate state. 
um, constantly need to be confirmed and validated. So do you have any advice for people that are kind of in that desperation state? I personally went through a stage like that where I was watching multiple, multiple readings a day. And this is how I knew it was kind of becoming not healthy is because nothing was ever enough. You know, mm. like e even if I watched a reading and the person was saying what I want to hear, that was not enough for me. So I would, I would try to like seek that same answer again and again and again and again. And it was like a void. I think when you're watching them and it's, it's not bringing you that confirmation and it's not bringing you that validation and it just feels like a, a bottomless pit that you need to keep filling. I think everyone's going to be different. What I personally did and what I might recommend is just to make a clean break for a while. I don't know if this is exactly a good comparison, but it's like if you had a muscle that is like atrophied inside of you and you need to give it a chance to build its strength again, mm -hmm. so like you just have to give a clean break and let that intuition muscle like you got to give her a chance like give her a chance to get strong again and then if you can if you feel like you can come back to it then you should do that when they're in that desperate state i always suggest people to like pray you know mm -hmm. whatever whatever you believe in being still and, mm -hmm. and just kind of like asking for that clarity make it known to me without a shadow of a doubt mm -hmm. and i've had many many experiences like that in my life where it's answered immediately Mm -hmm. I really believe in that. If you make a humble offering mm -hmm. to whomever you're working with, if you really come in total humility and be like, this is what I'm struggling with, I find that they will respond very quickly. If you just like, if you hand it all over to them. Mm -hmm. um, I had to do that recently. I think it was retrograde and just a lot of old intense emotions coming up that I didn't, I did not want to welcome them back into my life, but I was really like, I was really grappling with that. And I just visualized as if I was carrying all of my confusion and distress and uh, struggles like in a bundle. And I just like handed it over and allowed them to light it on fire and like mm -hmm. just let the fire clear it all away. And I will know that anything that remains after that fire is meant to be there. And I don't know. I don't know what's going to be gone. I don't know what's going to burn away, but I humbly offer all of it and just like, and I trust you. Yeah. It, it takes a lot of trust to do that. I'm just like, God, I can't handle this anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I need to give this to you. I'll, allow me to to see the clear path. It does that. That is our intuition. Like our the mm -hmm. higher power like really speaks through us. And especially for like creative people, sometimes when I'm and I'm sure you this happens to you, but sometimes when I'm writing songs, I'm like, I did not write that. Like it just yeah. fucking came. Oh my gosh. I have to tell you. This what? happened to me recently because <laughs> this must have been like literally like seven or eight years ago, I was walking down the street. Like I remember the street. I remember like I was living in a different neighborhood and this song lyrics just like came to me like, Brr! so I, I wrote them down in my phone and then I only just realized this year what the song was about. But it was about something that hadn't happened yet. No, listen to me. This is crazy. Because like this like big event happened in my life. Mm -hmm. I got the master back from the engineer the day after. And the was like recording. listening to it. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, holy shit. Like I wrote this eight years ago about this event right now. And it's like, oh, it's insane. What? Yeah. We're all, we're all tapped in like that. If we're just, we just have to like observe it and let it come through us. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so magical. That's so, so cool. I had an experience once with my dog. I had an intuitive mm -hmm. hit with my dog. I mm -hmm. basically put out into the universe, like, I thought, you know what? I'm ready for an animal. I'm ready for a dog. So mm -hmm. it'll come to me when it's when it's mm -hmm. meant to be. My friend had sent me a picture of Rosie via Facebook, and mm -hmm. she was going to the ASPCA. I don't even know how she got a hold of this picture. It was like being circulated around by her mutual friends. And I saw it like a week later because I suck at checking my messages. It's, I literally am the worst text or worst mm -hmm. messaging person ever. And I immediately like saw that picture. I was like, she's my dog. That's her. That's Rosie. That's my baby. Oh. And I knew it, like I almost started crying because I like I got shivers and goosebumps. 
And that's another thing too, guys. Like if if you you know when you're intuitively hitting when you start getting goosebumps and like a hair on the back of your neck stands up, like yeah. damn. But it was a powerful moment. And I arranged the whole pickup like literally in an hour. And I called oh my gosh. I called my ex at the time, my my husband at that time. And I said, we're getting a dog tomorrow. And he was like, what? <laughs> and I said, trust me, it's it's my dog. It's the dog that I've always wanted. Like, I feel so connected to her. And I shit you not, that bitch has not left my side. I Ooh. could not live without her. She is just the the light of my existence. I love her so She's much. She's your soulmate. She is my soulmate. And you know what I've told her so many times when I'm like laying in bed with her? Mm -hmm. I'm like, bitch, if you don't come <gasps> back to me when you die... <laughs> I'm going to be so pissed. Like, oh. <laughs> and I see her like she looking will. at me. She absolutely will. I'm like, whether that's in the form of like a hamster, I don't care, but you need to come <laughs> back to me. Like you are, you are my, you're my soulmate. Yeah. And it's just an excellent example when you, when you feel that hit coming in and you just go for it, like your life can change. You just act on it. Absolutely. Girl, that's how that's how I went viral for the first time. I, oh, yeah? I can't believe I didn't tell you about this. In I think June 13th, I'm pretty sure that was the date. And I had this like silly song in my head. Mm -hmm. And I was going through my divorce at the time. It was awful, like separation. It was just it was an awful time in my life. And I was dropping off a package for my mom at UPS. Mm -hmm. It was in the Walmart parking lot. It was hot as shit. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, this voice comes into my mind it, it was subtle, but it was very urgent. And it was like, it's mm. time. You need to record that song right now. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, fuck it. All right. All right. I'm going to sing about boob sweat and swamp ass. Like, that's my intuitive hit. I love record. that. It's so weird. I record it. I edit it. I post it literally at that moment. And it was 11-11 at the time. I took a screenshot too. I was like, I can't believe this is happening 11-11. You know, posted it to Instagram and TikTok at the same time. Shut it off. Didn't look at it. And like three days later, it was like at a million views. And that was like my... Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was so nuts. And then it, it hit like 10 million views over like that week or something like that. And that's what started everything. Oh my God. And it was all because of an intuitive hit that just came into my mind and I listened and I trusted it. And oh my gosh. it changed my life. So like trust that shit, bitch. Like you gotta trust yes. it. Yeah. We're like regardless of of what happens i think making that a practice is so important like mm -hmm. in your case something really huge happened which is that's insane that's amazing i i love you for like for listening to that urge and just going for it cuz i can also imagine a, a situation where you're like oh, i'll do it later or like oh no maybe that's not a good idea cuz the mind tends to do that right the fact mm -hmm. that you're just like okay intuition i'm going to do it like I love that so much. I think like, I guess what I want to say is to make trusting your intuition like a commitment and a practice that you're going to do no matter what, mm -hmm. um, like to not have that condition attached to it. Because I feel like we we can do that sometimes. Our intuition tells us to do something. And then if it doesn't create that exact outcome that we thought it would, then we think that we were misled or we misunderstood it or we did something wrong when maybe we just don't know the reason we were meant to do that yet. And it's going to reveal itself to us over time. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like attaching that expectation can be misleading sometimes. Absolutely. It's planting a seed, mm -hmm. like thinking of it as planting a seed. And when I followed it, that's basically what I was doing. Like I, I, I had no intention of mm -hmm. going viral at all. I was just, I was mm -hmm. just like, well, why am I getting this weird fucking thought <laughs> to do this? It's yeah. so weird. You're just um, open to it. I usually hear my intuition on my walks. Yeah. And like riding your bike, walking, things like that. Yes. Running. I hear it a lot when I'm running. Is that part of your spiritual practice? Like, do you, do you run and, and kind of do physical activity? Like, how do you tap in that's not the main purpose for it i ha i just i'm in aries and i have a lot of pent-up energy <laughs> so i love competition so i just compete with myself it's a very aries trait <laughs> oh god yeah i'm like and that's that's part of me that i feel like might not really come out when i'm doing my videos because i have this nice like venusian taurus rising and i'm like that's why people think i'm calming but i'm like hot wheels chaotic <laughs> 
<laughs> when you're running, you cannot really think, right? All you can think about is like, keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And so your mind doesn't really wander. So that's often a time where little bloop, little downloads will pop in. Or yeah, when I'm biking, I'll just be like thinking about life. Like I find meditation to be easier for me in movement rather than just like sitting there. Have you ever had like an intuitive hit before that you didn't follow through on and you were like, I fucking regret that so much. Like I should have listened to myself. There have been a few instances where I would get an intuitive hit to like not get close to someone or to not attend a certain event. Ooh. And I and I did it anyway. And then something bad ended up happening. <laughs> so I usually tend to ignore the warning messages, which is not good. I think that's but... natural though too, cuz like we don't want to like sometimes we don't want to hear it. Like we want to yeah. we want to go to that party, we want to hang out with that friend, but it's really really hard. I get intuitive hits about people too. Like Yeah stay away from this person and it's yeah. like oh, but I like hanging out with them like I I like mm -hmm. it but that always bites me in the ass afterward I would say like as a holistic way to strengthen your intuition building up like your boundaries and your self-love is important as well because that's what's going to make you actually listen because your intuition is looking out for you like for example when I had really bad boundaries and really bad anxiety I was kind of in a place where I felt like my well-being wasn't a priority and like looking after myself wasn't a priority. So if my intuition was saying like, this person is bad for you, I'd be like, oh, well, that's okay. Because like, who cares if something's bad for me? Like that's, you know, mm -hmm. whereas if I had strengthened my sense of self-love, that would actually have been a priority to, to keep my inner peace and, and to keep those energies away from me. The last episode I did was like how to how to be a confident bitch. And one of the things about being confident is like treating yourself well. Mm -hmm. And when you treat yourself well, it, everything kind of just naturally comes to pass, like your intuition, mm -hmm. your confidence. Yes. It all like connects together. I find it so interesting, too, that you, you're based out of Tokyo and you had such an intuitive draw to that place, mm -hmm. even as like a, a kid. So tell me a little bit more about that. Yeah. It's funny. There's a few different things as a kid that that made me drawn to Japan. And it actually started with, do you remember the Harajuku girls? Yes. Yeah. It started with the Harajuku girls, which I find the, so funny now. The Gwen Stefani, right? <laughs> yes. Gwen oh, Stefani. My gosh. Yeah. And I actually like credit Gwen Stefani for making me like obsessed with music because I was obsessed with Love Angel Music Baby the Sweet Escape, like those albums. And right around that time, my dad got us a MacBook. So I was like on GarageBand all day, just like playing around with music and like saying random Japanese words. <laughs> that is beautiful. That's so amazing. <laughs> That's how it all started. And I had this like character. I pretended to be this like Harajuku rabbit <laughs> <laughs> who had like a huge walk-in closet. That was, yeah, that was my alter ego. Girl, I you need to bring her back. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. Like, I'm so pissed because like when I was 10, I would make these songs like as my little Harajuku alter ego. And then when I became like a teenager, I was like, oh, that's so embarrassing. And I like deleted everything. And I'm like, I wish I had that now. I really, I feel like there's a collective movement of just not taking ourselves as seriously. Yeah, thank God. I really like it. I really like it. Looping that back to intuition, when mm -hmm. I don't take myself so seriously and I embrace the playfulness of my life, that's when I get the most intuitive hits. Mm -hmm. Because that's what it is. It's exploration. It's play. Sometimes it feels like a test. Like if you listen to your intuition, and you take the right path, you'll be rewarded. Otherwise, something bad's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And it makes you stressed out. Whereas if you can approach it from a place of like play and experimentation and trial and error, even if you try something that doesn't work out and you're able to feel like, oh, that didn't feel good. That that was the wrong move. That in itself means your intuition is working. And that's such a good point. Like it's it's okay if, if you don't listen to your intuition for a purpose, but then it, you're proved wrong. That is data that mm -hmm. your intuition yes. is actually correct. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. And don't be afraid to be wrong. It's okay. Like it's, it's okay. okay to be wrong. Yeah completely okay again like kind of looping that back into the spiritual community like i i really feel like there there's so much anxi anxiety about like choosing the right thing and 
mm-hmm. and thinking the right thoughts. And it's really just not really about that. You just got to be playful with it and allow yourself to just be and be still and then it will come. This was yeah. a really good conversation. I love you. <laughs> I love you too. The vibes I said this I said this yesterday too, but the vibes are immaculate. Thank you so like, much. I'm so happy you reached out. I'm so happy we found each other. When I was thinking about like who to invite on my podcast, I'm like, I gotta, I gotta reach out to Kino. I just Oh, that is such an honor. It's such an honor. I had seen like a couple of your comments on my post before. So when I got your message, I knew who you were right away. <laughs> And I just, I love how you also incorporate into your comedy, you will incorporate positive affirmations and making spirituality a more earthly thing and Mm -hmm. a more normal thing and a more accessible thing that you can, you know, you can have these little moments with spirit and with your higher self throughout your so-called like mundane day-to-day tasks. Like it's always there for you. And I really appreciate what you've done to demystify it. Thank you, Carrie. Like, me, getting an intuitive so hit about swamp ass is it means so much to me. <laughs> like <laughs> that is so precious. It's, you know, it's all about that boob sweat and swamp ass, bitch. Like it, it, it hits. Yeah. When it like, hits, it hits, I love that. This is my brand. This is my brand of spirituality. It's like it's in the human stuff. Yes. It doesn't have to be like these spells and these like insane, you know, yeah. like and it crazy. can be. And it can, and that's great. Yeah, it's whatever you want it to be. I kind of compare it to like traveling. There's two different types of travel. There's like travelers that use points on their credit card and they're like really, really focused on those types of things. And then there's mm. travelers that just kind of like go and chill. And yeah. I really feel like there's Definitely like two kind of different types of spirituality. One that you can just live with and just chill with. And then mm-hmm. one that you take really seriously and you and you do your practice and meditation, blah, blah, blah. And both are very valid. But mm-hmm. you just got to choose like the, the path that's right for you. And mm-hmm. that's the only way that you'll be able to listen to the language of your soul. And that's all intuition is in the end. Mm-hmm. It was absolutely lovely to speak to you, Oh, Carrie. it was such a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes. If you prefer long form readings where we can just chill for an extended period of time, you can find those on my YouTube channel, which is Kino Tarot. Mm-hmm. And then I do the more little short form readings on Instagram, Kino Readings. And then I make music and my name is Kino Carey. And Carrie is spelled like Mariah Carey. All of those links will be in the show notes for anyone who is interested as well. I definitely suggest going on her YouTube. She is just a wonderful, bright beacon of light. And thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was absolutely lovely. If you like this conversation and you want more topics like this, please email your suggestions and your stories to brokenbitchesguide at mandybrook.com. Mandy with a Y, Brook with an E. And please share and review this podcast so it becomes more visible to broken bitches like us. Until next time, be a fucking delight, bitch. Bye. <laughs>